The plight of Ashkenazi Jews in the Russian Empire and later the Soviet Union is well documented. You're probably familiar with the notorious pogroms in Ukraine in the 19th and early 20th centuries, or the stories of the Refuseniks, barred from migrating to Israel by the Soviet government in the 1960s and 70s. What if I said that there were a significant number of Jews in the Russian Empire and later USSR who lived outside of Europe? Non-European Jews, as a matter of fact, comprise less than 10% of the total Jewish population of the USSR. These non-European Jews, however, had a different experience under Russian rule than their Ashkenazi brethren. What was life like for non-Ashkenazi Jews in Russia? What remains of these communities today? In this video, we're going to talk about Russia's lesser-known Jewish communities, the Georgian Jews, the Bukharan Jews, and the Mountain Jews. It must be stated that non-Ashkenazi Jews in the Caucasus and Central Asia live different lives than Russian Ashkenazim, having come under Russian rule later. Throughout the 20th century, these Jews maintained patriarchal families. This was especially true in rural areas. These Jewish families were larger and in Central Asia, Jewish families stayed in close proximity to each other. Jews in Central Asia and the Caucasus worked as merchants, artisans, and in agriculture. Members of these Jewish communities often did not marry non-Jews and were more strongly attached to their religion and traditions. The first Jewish community we will focus on is that of Georgia. According to some, Jews made their way to Georgia in 722 BCE when the Assyrians conquered Israel. However, Jewish tombstones dating back to roughly the 4th or 5th century of the Common Era have been found in Georgia. In any case, there has been a Jewish presence in Georgia for several centuries. The Jews of Georgia used Hebrew for prayer and study, but Georgian was used in everyday life. It must be mentioned that Georgian Jews did not experience violent anti-Semitism save for some isolated incidents. These Jews remained steadfast in their faith in Jewish identity while developing a sense of Georgian patriotism. Georgian Jews maintained cultural ties with their compatriots in Israel. The city of Ashdod in Israel, in fact, is home to the world's largest Georgian Jewish community. Until the 1940s, Sabbath observance among Georgian Jews was universal. In 1960, the synagogue in Tbilisi, Georgia baked 93 tons of matzot for Jews in other parts of the USSR. By the 1960s, Jews in Georgia were assimilated and well-established in society. However, the desire to move to Israel took hold of the Georgian Jewish community. Georgian Olim were pulled toward Israel rather than pushed out of Georgia by anti-Semitism like the Ashkenazis in Eastern Europe. By 1980, about three-fifths of the Georgian Jews counted in the 1970 census were in Israel. Svi Gidelman says, Georgian Jews fought a successful battle to avoid assimilation, and when they reached Israel they continued to insist on maintaining their distinctive culture and community, adding to the rich mosaic of the Jewish state. Jews were present in Central Asia since antiquity, but the current Jewish population, referred to as Bukharan Jews after the city in Uzbekistan, began arriving from Persian-speaking areas in the 14th century. Their language is a dialect of Tajik, part of the Iranian language grouping. This Jewish community is concentrated mostly in Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. Most of Tajikistan's Jews fled the country during the unrest of the 1990s and more than 70,000 Jews from Uzbekistan moved to Israel. These Jews spoke a dialect called Judeo-Persian, which was written in Hebrew characters. When the Soviets brought the Central Asian languages over to Latin and then Cyrillic characters, however, the Jewish dialect was never transferred to Cyrillic. Thus, the last Judeo-Persian publication appeared in the 1940s. Like in Georgia, Bukharan Jews rarely intermarried. They likewise had a strong connection to their religious traditions. The removal of Ashkenazi Jews from Poland and Lithuania to Central Asia brought the Bukharan Jewish diaspora in contact with more educated Jews. Central Asian Jews established their own community in Jerusalem back in the 19th century. Today, there is still a neighborhood in Jerusalem called the Bukharan Quarter. By the 1980s, 15,000 Central Asian Olim had arrived in Israel. By the turn of the century, it was estimated that only 30,000 Jews at maximum remained in Central Asia. Most Bukharan Jews went to Israel, 
but the U.S. hosts a sizable community as well. After the fall of the USSR and the rise of Islamic fundamentalist regimes in Iran and Afghanistan, many of Central Asia's Jews felt their time in their host countries was up. Mountain Jews, sometimes called Caucasus Jews or Tats after the language they speak, are Jews spread throughout the North Caucasus in places such as Dagestan and Chechnya in the Russian Federation and in Azerbaijan. A substantial mountain Jewish population is concentrated in and around Moscow. The mountain Jews language, Tat, is of Iranian origin. During the Soviet period, the term Tat became a nationality and not solely a language. Most Tats, however, are not Jewish. Having endured poor treatment on the part of the Muslim majority surrounding them, the mountain Jews developed their own martial spirit. They collaborated with the Russian conquerors of the Caucasus, which generated even more resentment on the Muslims' part. The mountain Jews also supported Red Forces during the Russian Civil War. It is estimated that 70% of Dagestan's Red Guard were Jews. During the Great Patriotic War, these Jews fought both the Nazi invaders and their Muslim collaborators within the USSR. Svi Gidelman writes, Traditionally, mountain Jews were carpenters, locksmiths, artisans, and peasants. There were few professionals among them and they were perhaps the least educated and poorest segment of Soviet Jewry. Zionist convictions were strong among these Jews. Mountain Jews were represented among the Jewish militiamen of Mandatory Palestine. After suffering at the hands of the Soviet government because of said Zionist convictions, many of them left for Israel. In the 1970s, over 10,000 mountain Jews, around a quarter of the community, made Aliyah. More of them followed in the 1990s. The Russian Empire and or Soviet Union included a plethora of nationalities and religious faiths within its borders. Even within these national and religious identities, there was great diversity. This certainly rings true of the Jews living in Russia. The non-European Jews living under the Russian state evolved differently from their Ashkenazi counterparts. Today, these non-European Jewish diaspora groups make up an integral part of Israel's character. What do you guys think? Who are some important Israeli figures with roots in the communities mentioned? What are some interesting facts about these communities that weren't mentioned here? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.